Welcome back to War Thunder Weekly News. This week we had update 1.73 released. I was expecting a whole lot of random micro changes opposed to just the French aircraft being added, but instead really all we got was the French aircraft being added and five vehicles for everyone else. I don't exactly want to cover every individual French aircraft because there are 30 of them and I don't actually have experience with the majority of them, so I can't really put any input on my thoughts and opinions on them. There's been concerns about the top tier jets, the SO 4050s. People say it's power creep and that it's going to demolish enemy aircraft. According to a video by Mike Goes Boom, it's not that overpowered, though it is definitely something new to the game, and it being only at 8.0 is rather stupid. I can't put noobs in my own opinion on this because I haven't flown the thing. From my experience dealing with the SO 8000, it's a lawnmower. If you can get it to higher altitudes, it could be rather good, but it doesn't like climbing. And it has a rather hefty armament. This aircraft is going to be rather good when tanks finally show up thanks to its abundance of ordnance. There was another plane on the French version of the update post that actually did not come into game. The BM-152C1, for some reason, guys didn't put in this game. And also strangely enough, there was a British rattle next to the name opposed to what should be French. This could have been a slight error, they're trying to imply that they're going to give it to the British tree for some odd reason. I find the way they went around doing the French tree really strange. A lot of vehicles that should have been in or left out. There's a high amount of copy and paste vehicles. And with the BM-152C1 shows that they are obviously holding themselves back. Also, strangely enough, there was a Curtis Hawk 75 in the hangar in the 1.75 dev server that also did not show up in the tree. All in all, there are many mysteries surrounding this tree, but hopefully all these errors will be corrected soon. And not Gaijin soon, like literal soon. Besides the French aircraft, the Germans got the Beagle Panzer 57. The USSR got a modification of for the BMP-1 that allows you to use a different missile and gives you smoke shells. Japan got the Type 5 Ho reproduction at 6.7, and I believe some of the values are wrong. And Italy got the M26 Pershing and the P-40. Besides that, I was expecting there to be many small changes, as I said earlier, but there weren't. There were small changes, but they're really minuscule and not really necessary bringing up, except for one that I saw at the bottom. A new mechanic for ammo destruction. Now, when one of the storage areas are destroyed and it did not detonate or catch fire, the module will be marked as destroyed in the damage model and cannot be damaged again. Also, the shell stored in the module will be marked as destroyed and may not be used. Plunging on a capture point will restore and reload these modules with new shells. I like this change because now when you do black out someone's ammo, you know that it is affecting them somehow. It's rather dumb for your ammo to take an 88mm shell and not do anything and still be able to use the round stored there. Although what's concerning is if it is blacked out and doesn't explode or catch fire, I'm assuming it will act like essentially extra armor to block shrapnel or shells altogether, which is rather dumb. In the past, a stack card image for the triplets was shown and it confused many people. The people wrote it off as something for the pre-tests that made Gaijin decide battleships was not the way to go. But new things have been found for the triplets. A research tree tile icon and a scoreboard icon. Now you would assume maybe these are just also artifacts of the internal test, but if you think about it, many aspects of the external test that we partake in these days, the stat cards and scoreboards and tech tree icons are not perfect or commonly don't have any effort put into them because they're not necessary for the game at the moment. We're just testing gameplay aspects, and these visual interpretations have nothing to do with it. So why did they put so much effort into making sure these ones are correct? Because some of the ones that of the destroyers currently are actually incorrect. I believe it was the Italian battleship was just reusing the 7U's stat card icon. And yet they get one for the triplets completely. This is making some people believe that maybe, just maybe, we are going to get the triplets eventually. But 
but I would say put this as merely speculation. There's lots of strange things hanging around in the game files that are very unexplained. As I said earlier, the Italian tanks are here. Well, two Italian tanks are here. There was a dev blog for both of them. The P40 is a player-made model, so if you want to support some random player, go no, right no, there. If you want to see them in action, Fly Daily made a video. He's not the most intelligent player out there, but he does have the ability to show off vehicles that not all of us are able to use. The Italian Pershing being a special variant belonging to a certain armor division concerns me on how the Italian tanks are going to be put together. The P-40 was essentially their best tank that they had. The only thing to surpass it was only paper. It's obvious that their tree will be supplemented by other nations. What's concerning me to a point is that it's going to be filled with lots of German tanks. I know that they use a Panther at one point, and it's going to be filled with US tanks because of the post-war usage, which would make this a rather complicated tree, having vehicles from three different nations in one. Although hopefully Gaijin can weary away from complete copy and paste vehicles. It would be concerning if they went down that path. I'd like them to be at least somewhat different than the ones in their respective nations. The final story is another contest. This time for a Zotac GTX 1060 free gigabyte. What you have to do on this one is create a decal using the Zotac yellow O in some way and the theme being push the limit. I find the theme very fitting because with a GTX 1060 you're gonna need to be pushing its limit a lot to get much use out of it. I was thinking about entering it just for the lulls but then I realized my current car a 6 gigabyte 960 is has just about the same power. Though what's very intriguing is that the decal that you make could be added to the game if you win of course. 30 other participants will receive one week of premium as well. And the contest ends on November 20th. Anyways, that's all for this week. Rather short. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more, I make these every Sunday. So hit that subscribe button if you want to be notified when I make one video. Sometimes I throw them out through the week. Hit that bell icon. You should get a notification. Anyways, I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.